Hey everyone, welcome back to TMAC FPV, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. Today, we're going to show you how you can improve your flying skills so that you can fly more like Ladrib if you're into freestyle flying, or perhaps get a little closer to Captain Vanover if you're more into the racing type flight style. All just by changing a few numbers in Betaflight. We're going to explain what those numbers are, where you can find them in Betaflight, how you go about changing them, and we're also going to demonstrate the effect that they had on my flying when I went ahead and made those changes. Stay tuned. The primary numbers that we'll be talking about are these numbers here for feed forward for the roll, pitch, and yaw axes. And the default values in Betaflight are set at 60. There are three associated parameters that go along with feed forward that we'll be discussing as well. The first one being feed forward transition, smart feed forward, and iTerm Relax. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the Betaflight tuning notes have to say about these. Okay, to get into our Betaflight tuning notes, we go to this link here, which I will also provide in the video description below. Before we get into the actual notes, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. First of all, I wanted to thank our fellow TMAC FPV teammate, Sub250G, for requesting the topic of this video. And as you know, we like to uh, respond to our requests as much as possible here at TMAC FPV. Uh, hence the reason for this particular vid video. Also, the stuff we're talking about today on feed forward and those other three parameters, you don't have to mess with if you don't want to. Uh, these are just ways that will help you improve your flying capabilities should you want to tweak them. So if you don't want to mess with them, don't mess with them, go with the defaults. Uh, Another thing I wanted to mention is keep in mind the different flight styles of uh, the freestyle versus racing type of flight styles uh, because the numbers and what you do with those numbers uh, will be different for the type of flying that you want to do in addition to the particular quad that you're flying. So if you're flying, if you've got two freestyle quads, and one's built differently than the other, one weighs differently than the other, then you'll have to tweak the numbers so that you get the appropriate stick feel uh, for each of those particular quads. I also remember, I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to fly like Ladrib. I'm not promising that you're going to fly like Ladrib, and I'm not promising that you're going to fly like Captain Vanover by the end of this video. But by tweaking these numbers, it'll give you uh, increased capability and actually help improve your flying. So you maybe inch a little bit closer to one of them if you want to. All right, let's take a look at the tuning notes uh, for uh, Feed Forward. Uh, Feed Forward came out in Betaflight 3.5, and the notes I wanted to highlight are here. It says Feed Forward provides dynamic stick boost or dynamic stick responsive responsiveness. It pushes the quad quicker into turns when the sticks are moved quickly. And with feed forward, the faster the sticks are moved, the bigger the push. It doesn't wait for any error to develop. The response is instantaneous. We'll talk about that with one of those other parameters, uh, one of those other three parameters, which I mentioned earlier. The feed forward effect is attenuated around center sticks by the transition parameter. Oh, here we go. This is what I was talking about. So the quad can be made more damped or less twitchy around the center for freestyle type flying. So the quad can be made more damped or less twitchy around center for freestyle type flying by setting transition to 0.5 or 0.1 as usual. But for racing and for direct responses, it's best to leave the transition at zero. So here's an example of where you're going to change this number, the transition number for freestyle, somewhere between 0.1 and 0.5, Whereas for racing type flying, you'll want to leave it at zero. Zero feed forward, not the transition we're talking about here, but zero feed forward allows D, the D term in the PID loop, to dampen the quad all the time, even when the quad is instructed to turn quickly. Too much feed forward, if you increase it too high, you may make the quad too twitchy and it may cause overshoot. And in the demonstration, the flight demonstration of my uh, abilities by changing the feed forward values, uh, that actually happened to me because I was trying to uh, get it to the point where it was ridiculous uh, for my type of flying 
and my particular quadcopter. Also remember that we're doing this video in relationship to micro quads. Uh, I used to have a five inch quad and then I did some durability testing on it and it failed. Uh, so now uh, I don't even own a five inch quad and this channel is primarily for micro FPV quadcopters. So we're focused on micro FPV here and with that in mind also when you're talking about freestyle micro FPV quads I was going to grab one here. Micro FPV quads weigh a lot less than 5 inch quads or mini quads. Therefore, they're not going to have the same amount of momentum when you're uh, coming out of a, a power loop or trying to flip over a, a tree or something like that. 5 inch quads, because they weigh so much and they've got so much power on those motors, you can flip them and, and toss them up over a tree and let them float. And they've got a lot of momentum. Uh, to be able to do that. But if you try to do that with a micro quad, because they don't have a lot of weight, therefore they're not going to have a lot of momentum and you're actually going to not float uh, in those maneuvers. So there's that difference between micro quads and uh, mini quads, if you will, with regards to freestyle. So if you're trying to do freestyle with micro quad copters, You'll want to tweak these numbers and any numbers you can in order to get that floaty type feeling when you're doing those acrobatic uh, maneuvers for freestyle. All right, so that's what the Betaflight tuning notes uh, say about uh, feed forward from uh, Betaflight version 3.5. Let's go back into Betaflight and uh, take a look at how we can go ahead and change those parameters. Okay, here we are back in Betaflight and uh, under feed forward, these are the midpoint values as was mentioned in the Betaflight uh, tuning notes. Uh, these are the default values of 60. For my experimentation purposes is what I've done is I've only changed the value on the yaw axis from zero to 240 in increments of 60. I believe uh, I've changed on um, the quadcopter that I'm flying the feed forward value on roll and pitch axes to it's either 80 or 100 uh, but whatever that value is during the demonstration flights I've kept it constant so the only variable I'm actually changing throughout the demonstration flights is this value of feed forward for the yaw axis. And there's a reason I was working on the yaw axis. And that's because what I found out was with the default value that I was using uh, on the yaw axis, when I was trying to do corkscrew maneuvers through uh, one of the very good quadiction pop-up gates, by the way, uh, I was having a hard time or I was struggling trying to keep the gate in my field of view because the way my thumbs are working on the transmitter, uh, especially when I was trying to do a right corkscrew, I was having a hard time with my uh, left thumb and the yaw axis getting the quadcopter to turn and yaw facing the gate as I was doing the corkscrew. So it felt like I was basically trying to turn an ocean liner as opposed to it being more responsive on the yaw axis so that I could keep the gate in my field of view. So that's the reason I was working with uh, experimenting with the values on the yaw axis only and I took that from zero which was not good to 240 which wasn't good and I uh, settled on somewhere in between and uh, spoiler alert, uh, my in-between number that I'm going to be using for that particular quadcopter for my style of flying, uh, which is more a race type style in my backyard, uh, working on uh, various maneuvers, uh, slaloms, corkscrews, things of that nature, uh, I'm going to go ahead with 150 on the yaw axis as opposed to the value of default value of 60. So. From now on, for that particular quadcopter, my value of uh, feed forward for the yaw on that micro uh, three inch quadcopter is going to be 150. And these values, I think I've got set at uh, 100. Uh, these are both 100. I'll go ahead and put those in here now. 
So that's what my feed forward values actually look like. Uh, the other parameters that we want to take a look at is the feed forward transition. And any of these values over here that you need more information on, uh, you, once again, you can probably go in the Betaflight tuning notes, but they've also uh, provided us with these little question marks over on the side, which you can hover over and see a brief description of. Now's a good time also to make a point that, uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't pay for this Betaflight uh, firmware, software, uh, user interface tool to program my quadcopters. I don't think anybody has. And the developers of this uh, Betaflight software don't get paid either. They do it for free on their own time. So with that in mind, if you wanted to support further development of Betaflight and support the developers who work on this uh, Betaflight software program for us, you can do that through a link in the video description below. So let's take a look at this uh, feed forward transition question mark. Uh, with this parameter, the feed forward term can be reduced near the center of the sticks, which results in smoother end of flips and rolls for freestyle uh, type things, because you don't do a lot of flips and rolls in racing style flying. Uh, you can change this in increments of 0 0.01 from 0 to 1. The default setting I believe is 0 and as in the Betaflight tuning notes what it mentions is for more freestyle uh, type of flying you probably want to uh, set this somewhere between 0.1 and 0.5 and from what I've heard 0.2 to 0.3 is probably a good setting maybe even 0.25 for freestyle type flying. What this does is it dampens the effect around center six, stick. Center stick is your zero point and full stick deflection it would be one. So if you set it at 0.25 then the feed forward transition, it's reducing near the center of the stick within 25% stick movement, the actual impact of the feed forward term. It's uh, proportional up until that point. So uh, the actual value of the feed forward term, uh, let's say 150, doesn't kick in as soon as I move the stick. If I have my feed forward transition setting at 0.25, it increases proportionally from 0 to 0.25 until it hits 0.25 stick deflection or 25% stick deflection from center stick to full stick and then at that point the feed forward value will actually be in my case what I've got here 150. So if you want that little bit of a play around center stick more for freestyle type flying uh, I would change it somewhere to between uh, 0.1 and 0.3 uh, but you can change, you can mess with these numbers at, at increments of 0 0.01. So feel free to go ahead and experiment uh, with your own particular type of flying and your uh, own particular quadcopter. Even if that's a mini quad, as a five inch, as opposed to a micro quad, uh, three or uh, three, two to four inch quad. For my particular case, I'm going to leave it at zero. The next thing is smart feed forward, which we haven't talked about yet. It reduces the effect of the F term in the PID loop when both the p-term and the f-term are active at the same time it only uses the larger of the two avoiding overshooting without the need to raise d but also reduces the responsiveness effect produced by the f-term so it sort of counteracts the feed forward term smart feed, feed forward I don't want to do that so your options here are turn it on or turn it off I'm gonna leave it off the last uh, parameter that we wanted to talk about was this I-term relax. You can turn it off or turn it on. If you turn it on, you've got the option of choosing which axes have it activated for. The default is roll and pitch. Uh, what it does is it limits the accumulation of the I-term when fast movements happen. This helps specifically to reduce the bounce back at the end of rolls and other fast movements. You can choose the axes in which it is active and if the fast movement is detected using either the gyro or the set point mode. So these are your two options, gyro or set point. 
Now, if we go back and take a look at our notes on iTerm Relax under Betaflight 4.0 tuning notes, iTerm Relax cuts the rate of growth of I during fast movements. It reduces I related bounce back or overshoot uh, after fast inputs. Basically, what these notes say for improved set point mode I term relax is that for racing type flying, you want to use the set point mode. And it talks about values that you can uh, take a look at based on your quadcopter size and weight and things of that, and prop size, things of that nature. Uh, and for more freestyle or line of sight oriented, the gyro term is better because gyro mode with excessively low cutoff frequencies are not ideal for racing or very tight spiral turns around flags or gates because the quad will become a bit unpredictable in how it handles tight turns. Uh, so gyro mode is more used for freestyle or line of sight oriented type flying, whereas set point is better for racing type flying. Now I will tell you this, uh, Ladrib in his uh, rates and profiles, uh, he uses gyro and Nurk, Paul Nurkula, uh, the racer, uses set point. As a matter of fact, I've got links to both uh, Ladrib's and Nurk's uh, settings in the links in the video description below if you want to go ahead and check those out. So let's go back to our beta flight and I term relax. I'm going to have turned on but for my type of flying I'm going to keep it at set point. Once again in the flight demos which we're about to take a look at uh, the only value which I'm changing is the feed forward value on the yaw axis. I'm keeping the other feed forward I'm keeping the other feed forward values constant and I'm not changing the feed forward transition from zero at all. I'm keeping smart feed forward off and I've got iTerm Relax on for the roll and pitch axes using set point. One of the things I wanted to mention was we researched whether there were any inherent differences with regards to feed forward values for micro quads as opposed to five inch quads. Uh, we asked that of uh, Betaflight Dev and his response was, there are no unique aspects of feed forward to micros or five inch quads. It's going to depend on the responsiveness of the quad to movements. Just go ahead and just go ahead and tune the feed forward values based on stick feel. Of course, when creating this, when creating this video, that made it a little bit difficult for me to come up with some sort of objective way to describe to you how the feed forward values or the different feed forward values felt. How, how do you describe a feel? I can use words, but it's not the same as you seeing it. So I can use words such as the higher feed forward values, the more responsive the quad is when you increase those values on a particular axis. It feels like driving a sports car as opposed to a uh, ocean liner. Uh, you can turn on that axis quicker than a uh, more slow roll on that particular axis if you had lower feed forward values. I could use words like that, uh, but you can't really tell the difference yourself unless you feel it. So the only other way I could think of to convey to you the differences of feed forward values was to do these demonstration flights. And as I mentioned, that the only thing I'm changing is the feed forward value on the yaw axis from 0 to 240 in increments of 60. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole flights because I went through uh, four different corkscrews on each flight, but I will show you the setting and perhaps one corkscrew at each setting, after which I will probably show you either still pictures of uh, one set of feed forward values versus another set, or perhaps I'll run one corkscrew side by side at those settings, just so that you can get a visual representation of the fact that with the higher feed forward values, I was able to do tighter turns, tighter corkscrew turns, than with lower feed forward values 
of the yaw axis simply because the quadcopter responded more quickly on the yaw axis with higher feed forward values than lower ones which meant that I could actually watch the gate easier as I was going through the corkscrew. I was able to keep the gate uh, in my field of view and I was able to rotate on the yaw axis more quickly which meant that I could do an actual tighter corkscrew than with the lower feed forward values where I'd have to do a bigger corkscrew just in order to give me time to yaw and keep the gate in my field of view. Hopefully that comes across in these demonstration video videos and either the side by side or the still picture at the end and uh, let's go from there. Hopefully with those flight demos you were able to tell that with higher feed forward values, the quadcopter is more nimble and responsive to your stick inputs. If you're a freestyle pilot, remember to experiment with the feed forward transition values between 0.1 and 0.3 and try setting your iTerm Relax to gyro. If you'd like to see more Betaflight Micro FPV videos, check out the link to our playlist in the video description below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Come on, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Clear skies, friend.